Hello everyone. Welcome to Cabbage Patch Soap. My name is Laura and today I will be making the soap that I mentioned in the last live, which is the, the soap inspired by Gone with the Wind. And I will also be showing you how to add Tessa Silk to your soap. Afterwards, I will be showing you how to make some lanolin soap, which is a special unplanned soap. Well, it was planned, but I wasn't planning on doing it today. So it's going to be a bonus. So that is what we are doing today. I'm just going to get my chat set up so I can see you guys. So just take a moment. We will also be cutting the soap, the spearmint soap that we made in the last live. Should just take another moment here to get this set up. There we go. Okay, so far it looks like it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna get on some gloves. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I am working on getting caught up on a bunch of things. I am finishing up the last few photos of the freshies, the air fresheners that I made so that I can get those posted on my shop. And you guys will be hearing about that soon. I'll be sending out an email. Also, something I failed to bring up in the last few lives, even though I wrote it down on my list of things to talk about, was I wanted a name for our little group. And I had gone over a couple different ideas. I had some ideas suggested to me. Uh, one of the ideas was Sprouts. And I went back and forth and I do kind of like that one. I wanted something that maybe had a little bit of a gardening theme to it or something. And I think that works. So if you guys like that, let me know. And I will bring it up again later um, when we get a few more people on. So first, let me just get this soap out of the mold. And if you guys remember, this was made with two different kinds of clay. Uh, we made it with uh, we made it with the uh, Fuller, Fuller's Earth Clay and also French Green Clay. So we've got both kinds in here. I'm just looking for a good spot to set this down. There we go. All right. And oh, it looks like my camera is off. Let me adjust you guys here just a moment. Sorry for that. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now you guys can see what's going on. So I'm just gonna line this up. I know it's off to the side a little bit still. I have some things over here that I can't move. So, uh, yeah, but at least it's in the frame now. All right. So anyways, I had, um, if you missed the last live, I had taken the two different mixtures, the one with the French green clay and the other with the Fuller's Earth. And I kind of, uh, I, I made it a little bit thicker because I wanted to drop in the soap kind of like a brownie batter like when you have the brownie batter with the dark and the light brownies and you um, put it in drops like that that's kind of what I was going for all right so just gonna line this up make sure that this looks good okay we'll go ahead and cut this and this is a very firm soap because of clays which is great I think and there is the end piece so here's the first bar this is the French green clay here, the darker color. Excuse me. And this is the Fuller's Earth, this more tan color. Here's the other side. And here's the top. So we did end up with a pretty nice design in here with the different, uh, different shades, the different colors of clay. And sometimes clays will darken and do different things over time. So as these soaps cure, they may change colors slightly. We shall see. So this is the next bar. These bars already feel pretty firm, which is nice. So they should be really nice hard bars. And a lot of people like clay in their soap. It feels really nice. It does a little bit of exfoliating and there are other positive properties to it. But as you know, um, legally speaking, I can't really say anything other than it'll help you get clean. But you can certainly look up the properties of those clays and soap and come to your own conclusions if you like. 
So these soaps came out, they're really nice, a nice natural color, a nice natural fragrance, and uh, very unisex bars. I really, really like these. They have a very natural smell from that mint. And these are the end pieces that I'll be cutting up for samples. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and put these up on the shelf to start curing. So just give me a second here to do that. And I'll put this away and then we'll get started on uh, adding the silk. And I'll be explaining why. So actually I could probably explain that while I do this. These bars are so firm I don't even need to worry about denting them while I handle them. That's fantastic. Okay, so <clears throat> the reason for the silk is um, I had a request for making soaps based off of old movies, old TV shows. And Gone with the Wind was mentioned more than once. So I really wanted to make that one. And um, as you know, or as I mentioned in the last video, I actually have never seen Gone with the Wind. I just never had the opportunity, I guess. And uh, I had seen pictures. I had seen snippets, um, little short fragments of the movie. And so I had a general idea, general idea of what it was about. Um, it's, uh, it's about a woman, if you can call her that. I guess she was supposed to be really young. So... Um, Anyways, uh, during the time of the Civil War, and uh, she wanted, she was, I guess, chasing after this one guy who already was betrothed or engaged to somebody else, um, and so she went about being, um, as one person put it, which I thought was kind of funny, um, was that she was being toxic and, you know, she married somebody else, but didn't really care about him and just, you know, things like this. So anyhow, <clears throat> um, her family was very wealthy and um, they were in, they were in Georgia. So from what I could see from the film, there were a lot of really pretty things that we could have based this soap on or to use as like design elements. Uh, there was very pretty um, wallpaper on the wall. They had beautiful carpets. They had um, beautiful clothes, of course, the gowns and things. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. The flowers, there's lots and lots of flowers, decorations. Um, they're just, it was very, very visually, very beautiful um, movie. So, in parts, parts of where, where anyway. So, I tried to take inspiration from that. And also tried looking up, you know, what there was in Georgia that we could use in the soap. And of course, my first thought was, well, the uh, state fruit is the peach. And I could, you know, make a peach scented soap. But unfortunately, I had used my, uh, my peach fragrance on one of the bars I just recently made. So I didn't have any of that left or not enough to make a full set of soap. So that was out of the question. Then um, I looked up their state flower, which is the Cherokee Rose. And I thought, well, maybe we can work with that. And sure enough, I looked up some information about the Cherokee Rose and it's supposed to have a very clove-like fragrance. And I do have some clove oil, but I don't think it was enough. I don't think I had enough to make the soap, but I did have this fragrance here. It's called Wisteria. And this fragrance smells very, very nice. It's a floral, uh, and it has notes of different, different flowers. Um, I'm just going to read to you here. It has notes of jasmine, lily of the valley, lavender, and rose, along with a touch of clove. So this had the clove, and I thought, well, this is perfect. 
Um, and this is from Nature's Garden. So I decided we would use this one because there were a lot of like plants and flowers and things, you know, especially used as decoration and stuff in the video, in the movie. Um, and then the Georgia state flower uh, is supposed to smell like clove. So I thought this was perfect. It would kind of, it'd have the notes of clove, which is the, from the state flower, but also have the fragrance from other flowers. And there were a lot of like floral decorations and things and flowers growing in the garden and stuff. So I thought this would be perfect. And then for the colors, um, <clears throat> the dresses that the women wore, um, one of the most common colors uh, of the more like beautiful gowns had white, either like a white with like a colored sash or, you know, a colored jacket or something. So I decided we'd make the soap white, but also I wanted to incorporate some of the colors of the different dresses. So I saw a lot of blue, red, and green. So I decided we would make um, soap in these different colors. Hi, Jill. Welcome. Yeah, the fragrance does. It smells really, really good. And I like florals, but I'm a little bit sensitive to them. And this is a really nice one. Um, this has, it's very springy and bright and it's very happy fragrance. I really like it. And I do like wisteria, the, the actual flower. I don't know if I would say this smells like a wisteria plant, but, um, but it, it's it's a very, very nice fragrance and very wearable. Um, it's one that I have considered making into like a perfume, like a wearable roll-on perfume. But um, so I decided we would do this. This would represent all the different um, beautiful gowns and stuff that you see in the movie. And then the reason for adding the silk to this recipe, I'm going to be adding, it's already in there. It's in the lye water. Um, it's the Tessa silk. And the reason for adding that is because I thought that it would be neat to, um, you know, again, going back to the uh, the beautiful clothing and stuff, uh, I thought that could represent the, you know, the silk fabrics and things that many of them I'm sure had. Uh, so now the, the, the addition of the silk may or may not make this a vegan or vegetarian soap. So I'm going to let you know up front that it is silk, uh, which comes from silkworms. So if you know, if that, if that's a concern for you or, or if that bothers you, um, then, um, just so you know, up front, so you know what's in this bar. Um, however, the silk does add a very nice feel to the bar. A lot of people, uh, like the, the, the feel of the, um, like when you wash with the soap, they like the feel of it. So I'm going to be adding it because I feel like it'll add that, that, like that extra class or excuse me, the extra level of like richness and, and make it, you know, to kind of, this is, um, the characters in this movie were very like higher upper class. Um, a lot of them were. And so this is sort of to represent that. So, um, I just wanted to kind of tie all those things together and I thought this would make a very complete, um, set. So we've, we've got the, you know, the, f the floral fragrances, things they may have smelled there. And then, um, the, uh, the, the, the beautiful clothing, the, gowns and such. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some smaller containers so that we can mix the soap in here because we're going to need that. And this is going to have four colors, including the white. And I'll get a couple different um, spatulas as well. So these are these little these big containers rather are going to be a little bit overkill but I don't have enough small ones so it should be fine though and then afterwards after we're done with the soap we will be making the uh, bonus soap that I mentioned <clears throat> excuse me so let me go ahead and just put this mask on just a moment This is a face shield. Uh, it just protects me from uh, the lye water and stuff when I make the soap. And you may hear me um, sipping on stuff while I do this because <clears throat> um, even though I'm well, I got over whatever the illness was, there's still that lingering like cough that's taking its sweet time. It's getting better every day, but um, you may hear me take a sip of something to calm my throat down so I don't start coughing. Okay, 
because talking talking seems to aggravate. I'm fine until I start talking or trying to do anything important. All right, got that together. All right, so let's go ahead and add this light water. And uh, like I mentioned, it does have that silk. And also this fragrance, since it does have florals, it's kind of silly for me to be doing this complicated swirl because um, florals tend to accelerate. So we'll be adding it at the very end. And let's see, let's just use this mold here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. So this already has the silk and um, it has sea salt in it. Just a second here. Just one moment. Looks like a small piece of glitter to send it down. I'm trying to get it out of the lye water. I don't want it in the soap. Won't hurt anything, but it'll be there. And okay. All right. It's being a pain. There we go. So this is what happens when uh, I'm doing a live and I can't edit this stuff out. Thank you for bearing with me here. So I tried to get this little speck out of here. Alright. I may have to just leave it in in the interest of not wasting everybody's time. I'm going to give this one last shot. Oh. Well, there we go. That's all it needed. Okay. That's good done. Alright, let's go ahead and put this in. Now I won't have the little piece of glitter floating around in there. I'm going to stir this up by hand for just a second. Alright. And all these, you know, the lye water, the oil, everything has had a chance to sit around at room temperature. I'm just going to mix this enough. Uh, just enough so it holds together so that I can divide it into colors. This always happens uh, more quickly than I'm expecting. So I'm going to stop there because I know I'll keep going and regret it. So actually we only need three additional containers because the white can stay in the main. Just making sure there's no more glitter. Okay. Yeah. So what happens, I was working on those car air fresheners yesterday and uh, they required some glitter. And so now I've got glitter floating around in my workspace. Okay, this last one has more than this. Just gonna divide it real quick. And tie a bit more in here. All right, this is looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dump these in their containers. All right, and then we'll mix in the white. Now the white does tend to make the soap set up faster than um, faster than the other colors. I'm just going to shake it up real quick. So I don't, I don't want to take too long. I'm going to quickly mix this and then mix these. And then, in fact, I will probably be using, let's go ahead and use uh, the whisks for this because, you know, I don't want to contaminate the other colors. <clears throat> I'm just going to mix this in a little bit. So you can see this is turning white. I may add a little more because I want this really, really white. And then the red. The red is always very, whoops, very vibrant. Oh, let me show you the names of the colors. I knew I was written something. Okay, so this red is Trial by Fire um, by Nurture Soap. It's a very, very true red, very vibrant, and it doesn't typically um, bleed and mix with the other colors. So. If you're making soap and you want a red that's not going to migrate everywhere, that's a good one. This blue is called Klein Blue. I don't know if it's showing up correctly on camera. It's always, the camera seems to have trouble with blues. Uh, and this is Green Vibrance for the green. It's a very nice green, uh, very natural looking green. Like a, kind of like a true green. And I, I really do like this green. I use it a lot because um, it's easy to... I don't know it just goes with a lot of things and and I can add yellow to it I can 
lighten it and darken it without too much trouble. All right, I'm going to do the blue first because that will not affect the green. And since there's so little soap batter here, I don't want to risk transferring the green to the blue. So I don't, I mean, it really wouldn't show up probably, but I'm still going to worry about it anyway. So that's a really nice bold blue. It seems like the colors, when they did have the colors in the clothing, the, they were very bold colors. So at least for the women, not a whole lot of like browns and whatnot. Okay. I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. That green looks really nice. Okay, good enough. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just carefully mix this white a little bit, because usually with the white, when you mix it, it becomes a little more white because it disperses better. So I'll see if that happens here. Okay. A little bit, but I'm still going to add some more. I really want to make sure this is white and not cream, but all right. Let's see how that looks. Oops. Okay. Honestly, I think that's fine. Um, typically, the soap the soap typically lightens as it uh, cures. So, at least with depends on the the fragrance, of course. But with this fragrance, I usually don't have that much of a problem. Also, because of the whole the name of the. Um, the name of the movie is Gone with the Wind. So to represent the wind, I'm going to be doing a swirl here. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to start with adding the fragrance before I forget. Let's do that. And I'll, I'll go ahead and add this and then pour the white in. Oh, you know what I did forget? We were supposed to do the individual bars. And I will need them for, um, I'll need the mold. So good thing I remembered. All right, so real quick. Before this, before I add the fragrance and get everything set up, this is that eucalyptus that we just unmolded, and this is the um, Castile soap that it was still it was still too soft last time. So let's pull this out first because this has been in here for quite a while now. I think it's been in a week, which is good. Um, Castile soap tends to be really soft at first, and then you let it cure for a long, long time usually six to 12 months, and then it makes a very, very gentle bar. So there you go. So this is still a little on the soft side, even though it's been in here for a week, which is longer than this one, which has only been a few days. So we'll pull this one out and you'll see what I mean. And see how cleanly that came out? It's because Castile only has olive oil. So it's a very, very soft soap. All right, I'm just gonna set these off to the side. I'll put them on the shelf uh, when I'm closer to being done here. Uh, let's see if I can find a good spot where they'll be safe. This looks good. Okay, so um, I did this because I needed one of these cavities clear so I could add the extra soap batter. Let's see if I can get everything under control here. All right. Just making sure this is still mixed. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to start with the white. And we will mix in the fragrance. Yeah, that's still really nice and fluid. So we're going to mix the fragrance in and then do the colors and then we'll do a swirl. Um, and hopefully we have enough time because this florals can can become solid in a matter of seconds. Yeah. Oh, that's racing, I think. Or maybe not. It's just uh, piling up on the side. Let's scrape that off. I think it's because I hit the stick blender with it. Um, if this happens, by the way, if you're making soap and you see it start to curdle or do, like, don't worry about it, just stick blend it. Um, I think, of course, it's totally made up, but I would say 99% of the time it's going to come out just fine in the end anyway. Um, at least that's been my experience. I've never had, a, you know, when they say that their fragrance is rising the batter or whatever, I've never had that become a problem um, if you just stick blend it out. So. Okay. Now, if it does that after you pour it in the mold, that's another situation entirely. But um, it does seem to have accelerated the batter. So that was exactly what I was expecting. So it's fine. I was prepared for that. Um, and that's true of basically any floral. Be prepared for um, anything that has floral notes. Be prepared for acceleration like this it doesn't always happen not every single floral is going to do this but just be prepared like there are some fragrances that say oh they're lavender and this or lavender and that and then um and maybe those don't 
accelerate, but then later on a different lavender and such and such it does. So you never know. Um, so I'm going to start with, I think I'm going to start with the red. I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this in here. Quickly, quickly mix. I want this mixed in really, really well. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and then I will pour it in. And we'll just do each color kind of one at a time. And then what I'm going to do, as soon as I put the color in here, I'm going to scrape it out into this mold off to the side. Because if I leave it in this container, more than likely it'll be a solid mass by the time I come back to it. So I'll push that in here, some of it in here. Oops. That's enough fiddling with that. I want to be able to swirl this and that white is going to set up on me if I don't hurry. Okay, so let's do the green next since it has the thingy in there already. Let's see if I have enough in here. Yep. Okay, let's do a few drops of that. Okay, pour. I'm going to try to do it from a pie. See if we can, oops, I'm bumping the camera. Let's see if I can, okay, you guys can still see me. I'm going to kind of drop it down in here. Okay, and then I'm going to take this and scrape it out over here. All right, a little bit more on this side. Okay. All right, this is looking pretty good so far. No need to panic just yet. Okay, let's put this here. Wisteria. Oops, that's a little much. Oh well, it'll be fine. Okay, that's that's already solidifying on me. Oh, go, 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 go. Yep. Got to be careful. Okay, but see how fast that can go? But that's because I, to be fair, I put more fragrance in here than I did the last color. And that's all that was. All right, let me tap that down. Kind of spread some of this blue out so it gets a little bit everywhere. And is that solid yet? No. Okay, good. I'm going to pour the rest of this white on top, and then we will do the stick blend. I mean, excuse me, not the stick blend, the swirl. Um, this might have been a little bit ambitious for a floral fragrance, but what can you do? All right, I'm going to put this down so I don't wreck the table. There we go. Pat, pat, pat. Okay. And where are my lines? There they are. Okay. So I'm going to set this down. I'm going to push all the way down and then swirl. Now, I don't know how well this is going to swirl because those colors did get pretty thick, uh, but that's fine. We will do what we can. All right. I'm going to tap these out. Okay. And then take this, clean up the mess, and... What did I do with my stick? I had the stick, the swirl stick. Oh, here it is. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of a swirl on top. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go this way first. I don't know how well this is going to do. Let's see. Yeah, it is a bit on the thick side for that. But do have an interesting top now. Let me just finish tidying this up a little bit. Okay. All right, so this smells so nice. And oops. I'm just going to try scraping out some more of these colors into this spare mold here. Push that out of the way. Yeah, some colors can react differently. Um, usually, like, for me, it's like the whites, the clays, uh, like white is anything with white, because the titanium dioxide, it tends to accelerate for me. Um, sometimes, uh, like charcoal, like if I add activated charcoal, although some people would say that counts as a clay, uh, that would that also sometimes accelerates on me. 
and uh, I haven't really had any trouble with with the colors I get from uh, Nurture Soap. No. Yeah, Nurture Soap. I, I haven't had really any trouble with any of their colors, but um, except for of course titanium dioxide. But that goes for anybody. That's not that's not on them. That's just the nature of titanium dioxide itself. It's just uh, and the clays and stuff. But that doesn't mean it, that doesn't mean it won't come across something. So I just haven't noticed it yet. Or it could also be that um, it happened and I was blaming the fragrance and just didn't realize it was the color. That's that could totally be what's going on. Um, I might be putting the blame in the wrong place, but all right, there we go. All right, so there is that. I was just tapping this. Hold on. Trying to get it to flatten out a little bit. It kind of sloshed over to one side. There we go. That's better. Okay, so we're going to let that set. We'll put that in the oven. Put the others in the oven. I am going to stack these, first of all. So that they, I can get them out of the way for the next batch that we're making. Um, hmm. I did not think this through. All right, let me pull this out. I have this stick blender. And really, I don't want to be um, using this in the next one. So let me grab my other stick blender because I don't want to risk the fragrances uh, blending at all. Oh, it smells really good. This has a very nice, uh, strong fragrance too. It's not, it's not one of those florals that kind of disappears. Um, it smells really, really nice. All right. So I'm just going to get all this up because I don't want any of this color or fragrance or anything getting in the next soap. In fact, I'm going to change my gloves because I've got that fragrance all over everything. So let me do that. And so this next soap is, uh, these next two soaps are going to be very, very similar. The only difference is the oils that I use. So, um, and I'll explain, um, basically there is another channel and you guys should definitely check her out. She's great. Um, it's BF Fiber Arts by Tamsin. And if you look her up on YouTube, BF Fiber Arts, B as in boy, F as in Frank, BF Fiber Arts by Tamsin. And if you look her up, she's got this really cool channel where she spins, she takes um, wool and washes it and does all these things to it. And she does felting and she does all sorts of cool stuff. And then she spins it into yarn and she um, does all sorts of, you know, fiber arts, right? So um, I should be getting the stick blender while I'm telling you about this. Anyway. She has some of my soap, and uh, she was doing this really cool project where she had something called um, butt wool, and it's like the really dirty parts of the wool. And she she likes to say, um, you know, no fiber left behind or no wool left behind, and she'll take these pieces of wool that would normally be, you know, discarded because they're dirty and they look gross. And uh, she washes them and she was showing all these different methods of cleaning them that you can use and um, what the end result was. And the wool that came out the cleanest was actually the one that she used my soap to wash with. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. But the problem, of course, the downside with that method is that you have to um, hand wash all the little tufts of wool. Um, so a little bit on the time consuming side, but if you want the wool to come out really, really white, she found that washing it with the soap was what did the trick. And I had no idea she was going to make this video. I just was, every now and then I go over to her channel and watch some, some of her videos. And um, in that particular video, that's what she was talking about. So I thought, well, that's kind of cool. And uh, anyway, so the reason for this is that um, I'm going to be sending her, she doesn't know this yet because, well, unless she's here watching, um, I'm going to be sending her a couple bars of soap. And when you make soap, a lot of times, um, and I don't have any way to prove this scientifically or any of that, um, but it's been my experience that if you have soap made out of the same oils uh, as the, uh, as what, you know, if whatever you're trying to wash off your hands. So for example, if you've got a lot of vegetable oil on your hands and 
you're trying to get that off your hands and you wash with the soap that's got um, that's been made out of vegetable oil it seems to get the um oil off your hands better so since she's been trying to get these soaps clean i thought well i mean these wools clean um so it might be kind of cool to make a lanolin soap because there's lanolin in the wool and i thought well we can give it a try i don't know if it's going to make any difference at all but i'm kind of curious so lanolin is technically a liquid wax it's like jojoba oil it's the same thing it's a liquid wax and oops i'm gonna put these new gloves on real quick anyway um so i don't know uh, a lot of times liquid waxes you can make soap out of them but they don't saponify the same way that a normal oil would so this is going to be a complete like test a complete project and um like it's experiment i mean and we will see you know if she's willing to test some of the wool washing some of the wool with these uh, soaps then hopefully we'll find out so the reason for the two recipes is because i believe the soap that she's using was actually made with lard as one of the ingredients and lard is really really good for it makes a beautiful soap so even though like my soaps well except for the one with the silk um and occasionally i'll, I'll make a soap that's not vegan and i let you guys know because uh, it has some some ingredient in it that's like technically not vegan or whatever anyway um i used to make a lot of lard soaps and the reason is because um they clean so well so the recipe was uh, lard, coconut oil, and olive oil, and it's it makes a wonderful bar. But um, uh, because my soaps now I use vegan oil, I thought, well, we, why don't we try both? We'll make one with the lard with my old recipe, and just adjust it for lanolin oil, or and, and also um, make my basic recipe and adjust that for the lanolin oil so we could try both because I don't know if it's just like I don't know what part of the soap basically I don't want to change too many variables I guess is what I'm getting at because I don't know what part of my soap is cleaning that wool so well it could be the lard that's very likely because it's an animal soap and you're cleaning animal fibers um, it could be the coconut oil coconut oil is very very cleansing so that could be um, or it could just be the fact that she's using um, a nice soap and you know being very meticulous cleaning it very well and that might be what just just the fact just the, the method she's using um, in combination with the decent soap so um, I don't know um, and in fact she might try both these soaps you know if she does um, and she might find that there's no difference at all so we shall see and what I'm going to do because I'm going to make these soaps white uh, just like with the same uh, titanium dioxide and then to tell them apart i'm just going to draw a different design on the top and the reason i'm doing white is i don't want there to be any chance of the colors staining the, the fibers um there's probably no chance of that at all since i'm not, especially since i don't use any kind of like dyes or anything but i just don't want I don't, again i don't want to add too many variables and i'm just going to make the soaps white so that um you know she could tell it apart from the other soaps that she's got from me so this is the one made with the vegan recipe and this is the one made with the lard. So you can see there's a little bit of different color in the oils. They're slightly, a slightly different shade. And once I make the soap, though, um, more than likely they'll both be white. So that's, you know, even if I didn't color them. So what I'm going to do to tell them apart is I've got this uh, plus one fork of texture. And I'm just going to do a little design on the top. And... Uh, there's nothing special in the lye water um, except for like the sea salt. I didn't add the Tessa silk to this because, again, I don't want to change too many variables. So we're just going to one at a time um, add the lye water to these. Also, she likes uh, more natural smelling, smelling fragrances. So in this, I've got the fragrance oils. This is like a mint, eucalyptus, chamomile, and a little bit of lavender. Um, so this should smell really, really good. Um, I'm just going to pour... A little bit in each side we'll go ahead and add it right away because we're not doing any kind of like fancy uh designs or anything like that i'm not i'm not going to complicate this because really we're, we're testing the if again if she'll agree to do it because like i guess she doesn't know about this yet um but uh we're just testing the um you know how well it cleans the fibers and not so much anything else so i'm going to do one at a time 
I'm going to start with the vegan one because I don't want to get any of the lard in here and then have that screw, you know, skew the, um, the test. So, um, okay. let me go ahead and add the light water to this. I'm going to get this thick, as thick as it'll get, then pour it in the mold and then I'll do the next one. So this, and I'll do it at a higher speed so that this, uh, mixes quickly. Right. Whoa. Okay then. I need to calm down. In fact, let me get that, let me get this off of here because I don't want it to completely eat through the table. Uh, I don't think it will, but you never know. You never know. All right. Well, we're off to an ambitious start. Let's get that absorbed. Okay, so, I mean, again, this probably isn't going to cause any problems, but it gives me less to worry about, I guess. Move that off to the side to get my other one. This one's, this one's more dirty, I guess. I <laughs> don't know if this is making change for the better or worse. All right, let's go back to this. All right. We've learned our lesson. I will start out more slowly. Get this down there. Off the sides, get the air out of the stick blender. Also, if you like at the uh, the Tessa silk that I added to the previous soap, I know that Shauna from uh, Nezumi Soaps sometimes adds it to her soaps, and she posted a video a few days ago with her making a soap using Tessa silk. So. Should definitely check that out if you want to see more soaps made with Tessa Silk. Oh, and I don't know, see now I don't remember if I mentioned it, so I'm going to hopefully not end up repeating myself here, but when you add the Tessa Silk to the soap, you want to add it to the lye water. I know I said that, but you want to add it to the lye water when it's still hot, because that will help melt the fibers. So, probably should have made sure I said that earlier, but... All right, go ahead and pour this in now. Now that it's nice and thick. Now we will scrape all this down. Get this as clean as possible because I have to use the same stick blender in the next one. Now the recipe for the vegan versus the not vegan soap is almost identical. It's just the difference is the lard and like a couple minor things that won't make any difference. So I'm not too worried about it, but okay, there we go. All right, let's... That's a really, really nice creamy batter. I forgot to add the color. Well, I guess we're not having white, then are we? There's a speck of glitter stuck to this. Okay. So, it's uncolored. Oh well. That's completely fine. That's not going to cause any problems. I need the mold for the individual bars. I need a bigger work surface is what I really need. Okay, let's move this out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in here. And then after that, we will um, texture the top. So try to get this back on frame. All right, so I'm gonna just take this lanolin soap batter. This is also why I typically mix all my oils and everything um, before I start the live is because I tend to forget um, and, you know, just forget to do things. And I don't want to have like a special recipe that where there's something crucial like the lanolin oil and then just forget to add it because I'm spacey or whatever the reason is that I forget things, whatever the reason. And uh, yeah, so that's why you don't typically see me mixing things like my light water and my oils and stuff uh, on screen. All right. And it looks like there was a little bit of that blue um, mica that was somehow got on me or something and it's in there. Where is my, I had my stir stick. I did something with it, didn't I? What did I do? Did I, oh, I probably stuck it in one of the, the bins. I did, okay, let me clean this off. I'm just gonna decorate, I'm just gonna use this stick to decorate uh, this one since uh, this will be my test bar. So it doesn't matter if any color or whatever gets in it. All right. For my own purposes. 
All right, that's clean. Let's get this out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is put a different pattern. So this is the vegan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines like this. Hopefully more straight than that, but the fork's drunk. Let's just go with that. All right, so uh, this is the vegan one, okay, with the straight lines. And then we will make the other bar, and I will do a different pattern on that one, so we'll be able to tell them apart. That's already, like, near solid. That's pretty That's pretty awesome. Um, oops. Put that a little bit in there. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this is the not vegan soap. And um, let me see if I can get the stick blender a little bit cleaner. Whoops, I just yanked it apart. Let's see if I can fix that. I've done this before. There it goes. The, um, the plastic part on this blender is starting to break and come apart. <clears throat> why I don't use it very often. It still works fine, just sometimes this little plastic bit comes off. Okay. That's right. Okay, so we got this put back together. We'll add the light water. We've already got the fragrance in there. We've already got everything else. And see, this time it goes slower, so I don't end up Spilling it all over the table. But that's what happens, you know. Sometimes. All of my stick blenders have different speeds. Like, you can, variable speeds, I should say. So you can do, like, slow or fast. And um, since we're not adding color or anything to this, and we're not doing a design, whoops, I'm adding bubbles. Oops. That's why I'm doing it at a higher speed, because it's not going to matter. Okay, so this is starting to get thick. I think I'm going to stop here, um, just because I don't know how fast this is going to accelerate. Typically, um, animal soap fat, or animal soap, animal fat soaps um, tend to uh, thicken pretty quick. Uh, same thing with, like, coconut oil. Uh, that's been my experience, anyway. So, oh, yeah, first we got to do the main soap here. Okay, just getting set up. All right, and... Let's go ahead and just pour this in. This is going to be the uh, the lanolin soap made with my my vegetable recipe, but also with the lard. So we will add that and then tap out. You can see all the air bubbles. Tap them out. I don't like to drop it from too high because I've had soap from sputtering. We see there's still more bubbles. Now, of course, the bubbles aren't going to affect the design because there's essentially no design. Um, but I felt the need to do that anyway. And then I'll go ahead and pour this into here on this side. Oops. All right, I'll just scrape this out. There we go. There. All right. So that's all in there. In fact, I think what I'll do, just because I know myself, I will forget. Um, since these are my bars for testing later, I'm going to add, first of all, I'm going to take this mask off. Hold on. There. That's the best part of this is being able to breathe normally again. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of that uh, blue. What did I do with the stick? There it is. Alrighty. So I'm going to get a little bit of the blue from the soap that we made previously. So I know that this is this is the um, Gone with the Wind soap. It's just some of the blue. I'm just going to stick like little bits of it in here on the top. That's not going to affect any of my tests later. That's just so I could tell them apart. Um, and then the one with the lard, I will mark with the red. Where is the red? See, there's some on here, just on the end of this bowl. And I will just put it, come on, 
course it's defying me. Let's try that again. Defiant soap. All right, there we go. All right, so but little bits of red. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so that way I'll just remember this one is the not vegan and this is the vegan. Probably should have used the green instead of blue, but whatever. The blue was already there. Okay. Let's get this out of the way, this out of the way. All right, so before I forget anything else, this looks like it's thickening up nicely. Uh, whoa. Okay, that's yeah, it's getting there. All right, so what we'll do for this, since this is the non-vegan, I will put in some wavy lines. It's wavy like bacon. We'll just say that. And hopefully this is thick enough to hold the lines. It looks like it is. We'll give it a couple of minutes, and if not, I can adjust it. So, uh, yes. So there is that. So we've got the two lanolin soaps made, and we've got the Gone with the Wind soap made. Um, I'm just going to wait a couple minutes and make sure that, that that holds. And if it does, then I'll put everything in the oven, and we'll be back to unload everything on Thursday. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for any other soaps you want to see me make, please leave a comment or a uh, message here in the chat. And I will do what I can to make that soap. I really like making your guys' ideas, as you know. Um, also, um, if you don't mind, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. And um, I will see you guys all on Thursday. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. This was so much fun. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And Tamsin, if you see this, I hope you saved some dirty wool so we can wash it. All right. Talk to you guys, talk to you guys later. Have a great night.